In this VizCast, we're going to look at momentum and conservation of momentum. So momentum can be thought of as the amount of oomph an object has. Very, very scientific, the amount of oomph an object has. It can also be considered as the uh, difficulty to re uh, require to stop an object in motion, or the tendency of a moving object to keep moving unless a force acts on it. So a question I often ask in class is, um, What's harder, who's harder to stop, Dan Carter or Richie McCaw? Well, the answer is, it depends. Instinctively, you might think that Richie McCaw is harder to stop because Richie has more mass. However, momentum depends on both mass and velocity. So if Dan Carter was running fast enough, then it's quite possible that he would be harder to stop than Richie McCaw. So in the formula P equals M times V, P is momentum, we've got M which is mass, and V which is velocity. And if you look at the units of mass being kilograms, and the units of velocity meters per second, that means that the units of momentum must be kilograms times meters per second. <clears throat> Now, in problems in NCA, you're mainly going to be looking at the idea of conservation of momentum. And conservation of momentum says that in collisions or explosions, the momentum before the collision or explosion is going to be equal to the momentum after the collision or explosion. And this is provided that, or assuming that, there are no external forces acting. And an external force could be something like friction. Okay, so a typical problem. Alright, we've got two diagrams here. One shows what's going on before the collision. We've got a locomotive and a carriage. The, uh, the carriage is stationary. It has got a velocity equal to zero. And I'm going to make the mass, I don't know, let's say <clears throat> 20,000 kilograms, so 20 ton, and uh, the locomotive will say has got a mass of, I don't know, let's make it um, 40,000 tons, and a velocity of um, 10 meters per second. Now after the collision, what happens is the locomotive sticks to the carriage and they move together as one. And the question says that if this happens, if after the collision the, the locomotive sticks to the carriage and they move to the left as one, what is the combined velocity of the locomotive and the carriage? So with all these problems, you always start the same way. We look at this idea of conservation of momentum. We say that P before must be equal to P after, provided that there are no external forces acting. So what I'm going to do is break the problem up into two parts. Look at the momentum before the collision, and then look at the momentum after the collision, and then if we equate the two, we should be able to work out the velocity. Okay, so P before. P before consists of the momentum of the, the carriage, we'll call that PC, plus the momentum of the locomotive. We'll call that PL. Of the carriage, momentum is mass times velocity. We've got a 20,000 kilogram mass, but the velocity is zero. So 20,000 times zero is just going to give us zero kilograms meters per second beforehand. The train, however, or the, sorry, the locomotive, however, has got a mass of 40,000 and a velocity of 10, which means the total momentum before the collision is going to be 40,000 times 10 which is 400,000 kilograms meters per second. Now, as velocity is a vector, it is also important that we include direction, and the direction is going to be to the left. Right, after the collision, P after, is going to be equal to mass times velocity. The mass will be the mass of both the locomotive and the carriage added together. 
So our combined mass is going to be 40,000, that's the locomotive, plus 20,000, that's the, um, the carriage, and all of that's multiplied by a common velocity, which we're trying to determine. So 40,000 plus 20,000 is 60,000, and it's again times a common velocity. All right, final step. We know that because this is um, an isolated system, or we're assuming that, that P before must be equal to P after, which means that 400,000 to the left must be equal to 60,000 times V. Which means that the final velocity, if we rearrange this equation, will be equal to 40,000 and to the left divided by 60,000. And the final step is to work out what that is. Now I'm sure you do this by, by hand, but 40,000 divided by 60,000 is equal to, just as we thought, 0 0.667. We'll just keep that at 0 0.67 meters per second. And because the 40,000 was to the left, the direction carries through. So it's moving at 0.67 meters per second to the left. Now, before we move on, just want to make sure this actually does make sense. Let's have a look here. We've got a lower velocity for both the locomotive and the carriage joined together than we did initially. And yes, that does make sense because we've actually increased the mass by quite a bit by having both the locomotive and the carriage together. So you would expect the, math, the uh, velocity to drop, and it has dropped. It's gone from 10 meters per second down to 0.67 meters per second. A question like this is probably going to be worth um, an excellence. And the main thing you've got to be careful with with problems like this is the <clears throat> excuse me the direction. So just um, be consistent with your arrows, and you should be okay. In the next this cast, I'll look at a slightly different problem where we look at an explosion instead of a collision.